What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Melanin Money Show. And we got a special, special guest, man. So for many of y'all who don't know, obviously, you know, we got the merch division of the brand. And so I reached out to this guy a little over a year. A little over about year. Probably year. even more than that. Yeah, I was just like, yo, bro, y'all, y'all killing it <laughs> on the merch side. Like, if it's any brand that caters to our culture and knows how to do it, it's you. You know, and I'm a humble guy. Like, So people always wonder, like, how, like... How do you get successful? It's like, I don't mind asking questions. I don't mind being vulnerable about when I don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I reached out to him, and he was was gracious with his time and really gave me some gems and some insight to take our, our retail brand to the next level. And we're going to get some more game today Come to take on. it to another level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, with no further ado, man, we got Justin of Support Black Colleges. Man, how you living, man? I'm feeling great. Man. It's a pleasure to be here with y'all. Appreciate it, man. Of course, we got our, 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 you know, our co-hosts, Carter and Jacqueline. So, uh, we are excited to be here, man. So, Let's, we always like to kind of get the background. Everybody sees the, the low key Justin now, you know, super, super swaggy vibes. You know what I'm <laughs> um, but like, take us back to kind of how it started. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the journey of like, I'm going to create this brand or help create this brand and yeah. take it to the next. Let's just well, I'm trying to hear about Baby J. <laughs> y'all want to go back, back, back. <laughs> um i'll try to keep it short as possible um grew up in a single parent household my uh my mom my dad went to jail when i was two got out when i was 17 so Ooh. he wasn't there my whole my whole life um mom raised me she's probably the closest thing to perfect that there is on this world um she's really solid individual and after that Fast forward, went to uh, yeah. like college um, and went to Howard University up in Washington, D.C. and met Corey, my business partner. I was outside of a party because I was throwing parties in high school to make mm-hmm. money. And then when hey, I, yeah. to the party, <laughs> party yeah. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Bro, it's yeah. something, bro, it's, it's something there, bro. It's, it's a bit, it's, you know how to advertise? Yes. And it's, and it's a lot of scale. It's a lot that transferred to the entrepreneur world. Yeah. I, did, I did it too. That's how I got yeah. it. Yeah, okay. So. I did too, but the, the entertainment piece. Uh, right? okay, got you got to entertain people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I was throwing parties in college. Uh, started throwing parties, excuse me, in high school. Started throwing parties in college. Me and Corey met outside of a house party. I was a freshman. He was a sophomore. Yeah. He, I was sitting on the curb. I have like really big fro yeah, back then. <laughs> so <laughs> now it's just braided up a little more chill. Yeah. But he was like, yo, bro, what are you doing? I'm like, man, I'm just trying to like see where the money flows, like where the people go. And like, you know, I was a freshman. So he was like, yo, bro, come in. You know, then we became friends from there. Mm-hmm. And then um, they, him and his cousin started Support Black Colleges. And that was 2012. They did it until 2018. Uh, so six years. Mm-hmm. And then one day Corey called me. He was like, yo, bro, I want to take Support Black College seriously. And I was like, well, let's do it. Like maybe if we try really, really hard, we might be able to make like 100000 a month. Like yeah. that's... I, I could see that, bro. You, like, you were thinking like that? That's the most that I thought we would ever do. Okay. Like, I was perfect. like, if everything goes perfect, that's what's going to happen. Um, then I ended up moving to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Me and Corey ended up, started taking the business seriously. Mm-hmm. And then that's that was three years, four, three years ago Yeah, since I moved to Atlanta. Now. Yeah, it was crazy. I might have missed the gym. He said they were doing it from 2012 to 2018. Right. So, so people see the brand. It's everywhere now. They have video games. Quick blow up. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. But like there's a foundation. Yeah. You know what I'm there's effort. There's runway. There's a lot of effort there. So I think the big piece of that too is that um, this gentleman was asking me this earlier and he mm-hmm. was like, you know, how do I re-engage my audience? And I was like, bro, a lot of what we did was just do what we really cared about. So from 2018 up until people started caring in 2020, we was doing the same thing for eight years. Right. So I was telling, um, you know, I was telling him, I was like, if I gave you a contract and said, you know, sign it, you'll be a millionaire in 10 years, would you sign it? He was like, yeah. And I was like, then why can't you do the same thing for 10 years straight? Mm. Just a fan. And I was like, you don't need to re-engage. You just right. need to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, the problem is people, people want it so fast and then social media creates this, this idea. Right. Right. And like, you can get it. You know what I'm saying? Everything is passive. And we all know right. that passive income is not passive. Bro. Um, <laughs> Bro. <laughs> and so people see it and, and they also compare, you know, your chapter 20. Right. right, you know, what I'm saying? and I knew that when I was going to ask him questions, I'm like, I can't expect to do what support black college is doing today. What I can do is I can learn right. and I can follow in their footsteps. You, you can shorten the time gap. Right? For sure. That's really all it is. Yeah. yeah, there's there's no passive. It's like varying degrees of active. Right. Ooh. Uh, in fact, but what's my guy? You probably follow him too. Alex or Mosey. I think I heard oh, him say man. something like yeah, that. Yeah, Alex, yeah. my boy yeah. Alex. Savage. Yeah. Savage. Yeah. Alex and Mosey. Y'all not following him. It's, it's so true. Varying degrees of active. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's so true. 
Except for if you get into a few things, like it's maybe like things. staking crypto, yeah, like yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, it's not him, but you don't get the money to be a right, staking crypto right, in the first right, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the active income gives you that passive. That's income. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so we fast forward and now now everybody knows support black. I mean, I've literally seen it everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I always smile with like, yeah, my Um and so Let's just talk about like a little bit on the because I think what you do really well that, that you he gives away so much game for free like I mean every now I mean IG late like hey, live and he just giving it away yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying so like let's talk a little bit about the the infrastructure side because the problem is it's like I told Carter this yesterday there's a difference between merchandise and a fashion brand right right you you, you can sell it. please put in merchandise here at the conference right? oh right. I got this business and we sell T-shirts now. right right so just walk us through a little bit of like the infrastructure of like yo. We have this brand, this IP, mm-hmm. right? And just like, what does it take to create that brand? And what are some of the things people have to be mindful about when trying to build something? Because I think they, just, they see a $50 hoodie and they think, oh, if I sell it, if I can get it for 20 right. so they yeah, think that's yeah, it, yeah. right? Just walk us through a little bit of like the logistics. And all that kind of stuff. You know, if I'm being honest, I think a lot of it kind of just came from a little bit of luck, you know? Yeah. Like I think in business, a little bit of luck is always, you know, helpful. Um, yeah. But sometimes, you know, the harder we work, the more lucky we get. Mm-hmm. But, right. um, you know, when we were first starting, it's just, I cared about it, you know? That's really all it was. It was, it's, it's a cause, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I think that whenever... I talk to new entrepreneurs, especially, and they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, well, you need to identify who you are. So I'm like, what type of entrepreneur do you want to be? How many people can you handle managing? What skill sets do you already have that you can apply to whatever business model? Because all of the business models make money, Mm -hmm. but you need to figure out which one can fit your lifestyle because people do what I did, which was wrong. And I built a lifestyle around my business rather than a business around my lifestyle. Mm. And I was like, damn, I wish that I would have went into it thinking, right. who am I as a person? What are my skill sets? What business model fits the skill sets that I, I already have? And do I want to be a CEO? Because a CEO is just a, a label for you to take the blame for everything. <laughs> Ooh, but you have to have a yeah. bunch of different skill sets too. And yeah. that was a, a hard realization for me. It was like, wow. I'm calling myself a CEO, but I have no no right to call myself that because I don't know how to read a PL. I didn't know how to look at a balance sheet. I didn't have good leadership skills, but I had 30 employees and it looked fine. Right. But I think that to go to, to answer your question is like you gotta really understand yourself before right. you can structure out the brand, the people, the everything else. It starts with it starts with that so you know what was really big for me on that and i got this one from maddie j he was like look you literally need to go through and he was like you need to make a spreadsheet from the year you were born until now and he was like you need to put something that happened a big event that happened every single year and then i want you to categorize it on one to ten like on a scale of one to ten how good was it and i feel like that's really helpful for new entrepreneurs to get to know themselves like you said if they don't know themselves it's going to be really hard for them to build that business. Yeah, And, and you hit the nail on the head, bro, because it's like early in my session today, we were talking about a credit panel. And one of the things I was saying, I was like, well, regardless of what you want to do, like self-awareness is, right. is key, right? You got to know like what it is that you want yeah. because it's easy to get blinded by all the things on social media, That's right? It's right. so easy. What's going on, guys? I'm George. I'm Jacqueline. And I'm Carla. And we are your money mentors. But today we wanted to talk to you about a really special feature, Financial Flicks. Can you imagine an entire on-demand library of financial content across three main categories, wealth building, entrepreneurship, and personal finance, so that you can take your finances to the next level? Guys, when you replace entertainment with education, your life will change forever. Imagine replacing one hour of Netflix with one hour of financial flicks. Imagine how much further that could take you to your financial destination, and we have the perfect library for you. Yeah, so if you're ready to financial flicks and chill with us to put more of your energy into education, then join us in the club. We can't wait to see you there. See you there. Bro, get to the curse. I did yeah. something a while back that really helped me out. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it'll still help the audience too. I wrote down everything that I thought that I wanted. Mm-hmm. And then it was like a long list, like maybe 15, 20 things. And then it was like, you know, help my mom out, like Lambo and house and, you know, whatever, like just all of the things that, you know, you think you want. And then after that, I said, now I'm going to cross out everything that's on this list that if I died, I wouldn't care whether it happened or not. And then I was like, all right, so Lambo, I'm straight. Like, mm-hmm. you know, big house, like, 
okay, whatever. My mom got to like do that. You know what I'm saying? I, and then it really put in perspective for me. It was like, these are the things that I truly care about. Mm, um, that's, 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 and, that's, that's, that's and then that helped me kind of like create the business and like the lifestyle that I wanted because yeah. I figured out what I actually truly cared about. That's and then whenever you see something like, oh, so-and-so driving this and that, I'm like, List, like you know, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know so like, I posted on, I need like guitar review real quick. Like I posted something on Twitter the other day. I was like, "What you looking like uh, driving a limo? Your mom's still fighting, right? Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like what, what are we doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's priorities. It's, I'm not saying you can't have it. Right. I'm just saying, where is it on family yeah, still in the hood? Right. Like, you, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? Like it's, it's you in Atlanta? You visit in the hood in Atlanta? Right, right. Because you, know you got to pull up your OG. Like it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, guess what? That's inspiring. And so is this review that we got that was titled The Most Inspiring Podcast to Listen to. Okay. Uh-oh. I will take so we like to share some of the reviews on our good. show just because we feel like people who come on there giving so much game. I know we're gonna get like 50 five star reviews about the oh. gems you've shared. We're not even halfway through yet. Okay. So this was really cool. It was from David. It says, this is almost too good to be true with the amount of information and ideas this podcast gives out. I don't know if I'm breaking your rules because I'm not black. I'm Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. Yeah. He said, either way, I'm still not going to stop listening. So, David, we really appreciate it. Hey, 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 shout out my boy, David. Shout out, David, man. Mel- mm-hmm. You know, Melanin Money is like, we're just super serving the culture. Y'all can, y'all can get these these gyms too wherever you're at so it's all good <laughs> um, so now we're venturing into the asking for a friend question oh, I mean, right? so, 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 so then shop so then right you know what I'm saying so we can elevate to the next level Um, so one thing that at least from the outside looking in right because I know you'll give us the real from the outside looking in it's like this idea of man like uh, Urban Outfitters or partnering with the NBA right. or like all these collaborations can you that partnership happen at some point yeah, okay, 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 yeah, okay you know what I'm saying like being able to you know, create these really, really dope partnerships, right, to elevate the, the reach, and, I, and I'm guessing the money of the brand, like, how does someone, so someone starting that t-shirt brand or whatever, like, how do they get from, man, I got my first online sale on Shopify right. to one day partnering with whatever their dream, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, I can tell this story about yeah. the NBA, hopefully that'll answer all the questions. Um, so, it's actually very interesting because what happened was we went to a basketball game that Chris Paul was playing at, mm-hmm. and um, I actually didn't go. Corey actually went, and <laughs> he was he took some hoodies in a backpack, and then he was like, while they were walking through the tunnel, he like tried to like you know throw it down to like yeah. get his attention, but it just didn't work out. Yeah. So then after that, I was thinking, I was like, bro, there's got to be like a better way to get in contact with these people. Yeah. Um, and we had already DM'd a bunch of influencers, but some people like Chris Paul or whomever millions of followers might not respond some do some don't right so what um but i started to realize i was like wait these people don't even dress themselves so why am i trying to like that's that's get, real that's why am i even trying to like get in front of this person yeah so i started to realize uh, and do something that we call it uh like um i forget but it's kind of like where you get in front of the person that influences the influencer gotcha. in, indirect influencer marketing yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. so what i did was i was like who's his stylist and we kind of like hit up a few people from North Carolina like yo you know Chris Paul like, and then somebody was like yo her name's Courtney okay. and then I we DM'd her she had like 10,000 followers maybe 8,000 you just 10 100 extra chance to get in yeah, touch with exactly. somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. so then messaged her and was like yo we see Chris Paul's wearing a bunch of HBCU stuff why doesn't he have any sport by college stuff like what's going on and she was like oh I ordered something I'm just waiting for it to come in the mail and I was like okay cool so then looked up her name and then she had like maybe two or three things and we just sent her like 15 things. And then it was just like, you know, take it. So, I mean, but then yeah. we, we nurtured that relationship. So one, the person just starting can realize that you don't always have to go to the big influencer. Most of the time I go to the cameraman, the mom, the uncle, the stylist, the whoever, the whoever I can right. get in contact with and then build a relationship with them, right. leverage and give them stuff for free. Mm-hmm. Can you see if you can throw this to right. XYZ person as well? And after we did that, it was really just straight nurturing the relationship. So what we did was we made ourselves a vital part of their organization without taking compensation for it. Mm-hmm. So basically we were like, Hey, now that we're here, right. every release that we have, you know, you can have some. Right. And then also what, is wrong with you guys' business? Do you need help with anything? Like, what's going on? Like, where are the pain points at? And they happen to have a, a pain point with like some aspect of their social media. Right. So we're like making content on our dime, giving it to them for free, doing it for months and months and months. And then at one point, uh, they were just like, "Yo, 
the uh, Courtney was like, yo, Chris says he wants to like introduce you guys to the NBA PA, the Players Association, because he's the president. Or he was at the time. So then we go and talk to them and they wanted to make like a bunch of t-shirts. Mm-hmm. We made it for them probably at cost. Like didn't even try to like, you know, mm-hmm. make any crazy bread on it. Yeah. And then they wanted to do something else. It kind of fell through. But then Chris was like, wow, man, I really wanted this to happen. Let me introduce you to this lady named Chloe over to NBA. Yeah. And then that's when she was like, oh, my God, this year's uh, All-Star Game is HBCU inspired. We want you guys to make all of the merchandise, everything Jeez. for it. And then that's when we made all of that stuff for it. And then with that mm-hmm. relationship, we've done it every year since then. So can I just pause, man? Yeah. First of all, that's a story. Uh, yeah. That's a story. Mm-hmm. But so much I took away from that. Number one. You came to the game with intentionality. Right. Whether you were Corey, he came like, I'm going to try to give Chris right. Paul, you know, the shirt. Two, it failed. Right. And he didn't, y'all didn't give up. Right. I didn't say, oh, we're not doing this anymore. You failed, you persevered. I think thirdly, you sat back and you strategized. Like, okay, if we can't give it to the person, right. let's give it to somebody that they know, mm-hmm. which the person they know, they feel important because, you're, right. you know, it gives them the, their Everybody wants to be the plug. Right. Everybody, right. everybody wants right. to be the plug, yeah. right? And then yeah. you found you found the plug, you found the stylist, and then you just, you could have just gave it a three. She ordered it. Yeah. But you said they're 15. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, oh, when you're over-delivered like that, right. you'll be overcompensated. You know, my biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway was, no matter how much we evolve in this digital space, people and relationships still are the yeah. core. Relationships, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to tap in with people. Yeah. Relationships matter, you know? So, you know, we established a relationship. He added value to me. He reached out months later, had no problem doing his community right. class. And now we're at a conference, and I said, yo, Josh, hit him up beforehand, but, like, we didn't have no set time. Right. Then two minutes before the podcast, yo, you trying to do the podcast? Yeah. You think he would do that? There was no relationship? Right, no. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, you, you cool and all my guys, but, but nah, like, I'm not talking to you right now, bro. <laughs> yeah. and so that's my biggest takeaway, and it's a common thread of success in general is relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's up, guys? Congratulations on joining Team Blackwell. But we'd be remiss if we didn't give you a uniform as an official player on the team. So head over to shop.melaninmoney.com and grab your official uniform for Welcome to the Cup. We'll see y'all at practice. Right, it's like back back in the club days, right? It's like the old, there might be people who got the bag to buy the booth, but if it ain't no booths available, you not it don't matter. Right, really. you, you could skip that line of your man's is at the door. Right. You know what I'm saying? So relationships are always the breadcrumbs to your destiny. Very vital. Key, key. I think that every successful entrepreneur has stories of failure. Yeah. So for our new entrepreneurs who are listening, mm. what is that word, that piece of advice that you give to them That's to good. not give up? It's good. To not give up. Okay, okay. Well, okay, I was like, yeah, okay. that's a good okay. one. I told you um, I did the every year thing, wrote down everything that happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, to not give up. Uh, I think that you have to like change your relationship with failure. Um, you know, early on, I read a really good book. It's called Go for No. Oh, and I read so good. And it kind of just changed my relationship with no and rejection in general. And I was like, I just thought it was so interesting because it was like a sales team. And then they were saying, instead of making yes goals for how many sales they want to make, they made how many times can I get told no? And then they would always make more sales than they would when they were going for yes, because you would stop once right. you hit the certain amount. Right. So I think that, um, Changing my relationship with rejection. Well, I don't think people caught that. I don't think people caught that. Yeah, I mean, I, just, I, I had to think about it for a second. Yeah, think about it. Because you, if, if you go for no, that means you inherently have to have more conversations, yes. which means by as a byproduct of numbers, if you get 15, have yes. if you get 15 right. yeses in a row, if you get 15 yeses in a row, you gotta keep going. Yeah. That's success, but you're not looking at that. You right. Know, I got eight more no's to go. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you yeah. can't stop. Like, and your numbers are here. Right. Yeah, that's, that's I just want to make sure people caught that because yeah, yeah. I had to digest it for a second. I was like, yeah, that, that's a bar. Yeah, no. So yeah. I think that I think it was a lot of that. Just changing my relationship yeah. with uh with rejection, and then um, you know, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I really think that it was like uh, going back into like meditation mm-hmm. and um, just like connecting with you know whomever you you all believe like the source or whatever. Because what I found was that when I got to like the lowest points in business. The only thing that I could stand on is like the relationship that I had built with, you know, the source. So or and then also right under the source is like the relationship I built with myself. And I remember being it's crazy, bro. I remember being in the shower. Like I told this story earlier, like some a few years ago when we lost everything. I was in the shower and I was just sitting there and I was like, I was like, damn, bro, like tomorrow I might have to come out to the public and be like, hey, this is over. Like, it was great while it lasted, like so much fun, like mm-hmm. this and that. But then I realized I was like, wow, like it doesn't even matter. Like we 
you know, what we've done to date has been successful. I'm a great person. I love everyone that's around me. I have amazing relationships and that's all that matters. So, you know, I don't care, you know, like, so I think that it was um, building up that relationship with rejection, building up a relationship with the source and mm-hmm. myself, and then realizing that no matter how successful or not successful I was, I'm yeah. still a great person and that's yeah. all that matters. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great answer. So, you strike me, and I, I, I know this one because I'm a perceptive person, and I just like I know you on a decent enough level. Like you're not, you're not phased by like what's happening around you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you just kind of like Justin gonna live his life. He gonna come in with the slides and the hoodie, yeah, right. and gonna be super chill no matter what. The, matter of fact, we was at Dave's all white party. And Justin, yeah. Justin was like, I'm, I'm wearing what I'm wearing. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you, if because it's so him. It's it's, it's cool. okay. Right, 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 right. He's trying to stand out. He's just right. like, exactly. So like my question to you: In a world where now everybody is just like, you know, right. seeing so much in the land, and again, I don't, I don't knock it. Like it's right. cool, but like if that's your thing, how do you remain unfazed? Was it that list that you created and, and how you scratch things off? Like how do you remain unfazed? No, I don't think so. I think it was really just gaining like really strong control over my emotions. It was very important to do that. Um, And that came through meditation because I started to realize like when I would go play basketball, like I would get upset, like if something didn't go my way and I might like cuss somebody out or something like that. I'm like, why is that happening? And then I realized that like, you know, neuroplasticity is real. I can can change my mind if I choose to. And then that's when I started to get into meditation, did that every day straight for maybe like two, two and a half years now. Meditation every day for two. Yeah. And some days you fall off and on and off, you know, it is what it is. Um, But doing that, I started to like, just really realize that I could change my mind, bro. And man, bro, once I figured that out, it was over with because I was like, wow. And then I realized that money means nothing. I was just like, I was just like, this is interesting. Like money is a tool that's cool to use for certain things, but it only is really useful if you buy information to shorten the time gap or access to people in relationships to give you information or assets that are going to provide you more money. And then maybe we can add in skill sets. Right, so right, it's right. like skill sets to acquire to make more money. But at the end of the day, I, even like with the events, like the one we're at, I'm always very astonished that like, wow, someone's willing to like give me this information for 5,000 useless dollars. Like this is crazy. Mm-hmm. So I always am very excited to like invest in mentorship and things of that nature. Cause I think, um, and Alex says this as well, it's like invest as much, all of the money that you make invested in skills so that as you grow more skills, you make more money. And then now you have so many skills that make you so much money that you can't invest the money fast enough to gain more skills. Jesus and, Christ. Um, right, right. right. <laughs> so I think that, but to answer your question, try to shortly and briefly answer the question is no, this is no, no, no please, bro. Like, uh, you, yes. it's, it's, we all benefit from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm taking my notes. Y'all out, too. Man. Yes. Watch, watch our own, uh, watching our own podcast back. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. back. No, at the end of the day, I just realized that not a lot mattered except for my opinion of myself and the others around me. And once I had stopped caring about everything else but that, whether I had a car, house, or whatever, it didn't matter as long as I can call my mom and she was happy with me. Yeah. And I was happy with myself. Nah, that's real. That's real. So speaking about mentorship and, and investing in yourself, like yeah. and like now now mind you, he'll tell you this himself and you can just follow him to know like he will give virtually every you know everything he has for free. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And on lives and this, that and the third. But I know that you did recently, you know, outside of your your core business, you mm-hmm. now have um kind of a, an educational business, right? right? right. And some educational products. Right? Mm-hmm. So talk us about that journey and how that's been and why you decided with because you have such a successful brand, right? So yeah. it's like why you decided to, you know, create that type of business model. Very right? interesting. I have a story and then also I have like uh, some experience that I would like to share after. Yeah. So the story goes um, I see Mr. Two Weeks Out, Jason and yeah. uh, Marcus, uh, Neo, now all good friends. Uh, you know, we're all friends with everybody. Yeah. Um, and I see them like hanging out or whatever. And I was brand new to Atlanta. What's going on, guys? My name is George Atchampong. I'm Jacqueline Shaddock. And I'm Carter Cofield. And we are the founders of Melanin Money. And the reason why we started Melanin Money is because we know that there's a great disparity when it comes to building wealth among people of color. We have a tremendous mission that we want you guys to join. Right. Every single year, we want to help at least 1000 people improve their net worth by one hundred thousand dollars, which will create one hundred million dollars of new black wealth every single year. Can you imagine one hundred million dollars of new black wealth every year? 
as it stands right now for every one dollar that a white family has a black family has a mere 10 cents to match that dollar we want to increase the wealth in the black community so that we can have equal opportunities simply put we're about closing the wealth gap and it starts with you so see you inside so i was like making some money i'm like yo y'all got like all the older guys together but you don't got none of the you know young bucks out here really mm -hmm. having their way like y'all need to get some of the young energy around or whatever so i'm just messing with um i was rocking with this guy named leon that mm -hmm. runs uh that was running our yeah, ass yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at that point and he called me one day and was like yo mr two weeks out and his wife needs some help in the e-commerce space somebody's about to charge them 15k to like look at their Shopify and tell them what's wrong. And I was like, where are they at? I do it for free. Yeah. And then I went over there and just sat with them for like three hours and just gave them the whole play. And then after that, I started to see that they were doing uh, every Friday, they would meet up like Neo, Marcus, Jason, mm -hmm. Gooch, like uh, the whole team. And I hit Jason. I was like, hey, bro, invite me to the next one. Next yeah. one came, didn't invite me. Uh, <laughs> and then, Perseverance. Yeah. yeah. Like, then then uh, he was like, nah, little bro, like next one, come around, I'll invite you. So then I go and the first person I see is Neo. Neo. And then after that was Neo, then Jason came in. So I'm chopping it up with Neo. And then he like, um, hey, bro, what you do? And I was like, uh, so close. Like, you know, he was like, how much money you make this month? And I was like, <laughs> I was like 650,000. And then he was like, he was like, you, you teach anybody to do what you do? And I was like, nah, he was like, oh yeah, you selfish. And then, <laughs> and then That's like, Neo for you, bro. Like, you crazy. And then he was like, you know, you can make the same amount of money you make in this space, you can make it in the other space as well, you know, arguably much easier. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, you know, write an ebook. That's what I do. Write an ebook. I'll give you seven days or 14 days. I don't remember what he said. He always give you a timeline yeah. to make you do it yeah. fast, bro. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, you know, so I would do like, you know, nine to five, work on sport by colleges, then like five to 10, working on like, you know, just my own personal projects. And then from 10 to two for like two weeks straight, I was just writing everything down that I knew about e-commerce. And that's the book that I gave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything, it's everything. everything that I knew, my, everyone, my manufacturers, plugs, like all types of stuff, whatever. And then, um, and then I launched it and then it did well. And then after that, I was like, wow, this space is pretty cool. Like, and I started to like really get obsessed with it. So like the webinars and the challenges and the high ticket and the do it yourself done with you, done for you, all of that. And then it kind of turned into its own business, um, which was cool. But now going back to what I wanted to like share is like, it's very interesting though, because if I had to go back, I wouldn't do it again. And, um, I would just share all of the information for free, but focus solely on my core business because I think that there's some merit to like not splitting up your attention amongst too many fronts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just natural splitting up my attention 50 50, then got to be a man, then like you got to like mess with your family. So I was like, wow, I wonder what would have happened if I would have just gave like 100 percent attention to the core business. Right. I'm pretty sure that I could have made the same money that I made with right. the side business if I just stayed the course and focused right. on that. So whenever people ask me about that in general, I always say love it, love teaching, love helping. I'll do it for free. And I can and I plan on doing so. So um, I've been thinking a lot about it, like, you know, just maybe in and out the year and mm -hmm. being done with teaching and then just using the money that we already have to hire someone to come follow me around for free and just give it all away because I don't care about the money. Sure. So and, um, and I think that's there's value in that because Alex does that. Alex, yeah. he, he wrote the book. He said, you know, you, I'm going to charge you anything. Right. You know? The older side is not free because Amazon won't let me. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And there's value in that for the executors. People mm -hmm. like me can read the book and take off with it. Right. The problem with getting, giving stuff away for free is that when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. Right. So we were just talking about the high ticket offer. Yeah. And your, your mentees that showing up every day that right. are executing. Right. And they're doing that because they paid you a substantial amount of money. Right. That if you gave it to them for free, they buy that's cool. Whatever, right. We, you know, I'm not going to really run the play. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I think that there's, you know, it, it fits for separate business models because even Alex is business model he wants to grow the the people that are executors right. to that specific level so so that yeah. it makes <laughs> sense. Out, right? but for someone like let's just say uh you know neo or whomever they are digital marketers mm -hmm. like and they that's their business their core right. business so and that makes sense when you pay you pay attention like i understand it so i think that there's merit on both sides right. i just thought about it and was like huh when i die and like Folks is at my funeral or whatnot. I want them to be like, he gave everything away and didn't hold anything back. And for those that took it 
and was able to win. And then maybe I start investing in folks as well. That'll be cool. Right. But for all of the others, I just want to be able to be like, yeah. And it's the ripple effect, ripple effect mm-hmm. of the impact. I was telling him this other day too. So we always think about how someone's going to be impacted that we teach. We yeah. forget the fact that when they get that information, they're going to share. See, this and the issue. They're going to share. They people are going for passive income, but they should be going for passive impact. That's the issue. Same PI. Ooh, bro, bro, right. Right. Hey, 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 man, run that back to her, bro. Hey. <laughs> are we like, wait, hold on. Just logistical question. Are we still under 30 minutes? Yeah. What? Wow. But he packed up that back that Bro, much. Oh my god. Jesus no Christ. Duh. No you know, I was wondering, like he didn't give us the heads up yet. No. Like, let, me, let, me, let me say <laughs> wow. that I didn't personally know yeah, you totally before different. this episode. <laughs> oh. and, and you're probably one of the most insightful people I've spent 30 minutes around. Oh, I really appreciate that. Like no, bro, and that's like for real. I'm around you anonymous. Like you you have insight now. Really you're a great storyteller. That. Thank you so much. Right. It's because it's coming from the heart, right? I, got, this, I can feel it. It's not this pride, ego, bravado, like I'm not the biggest right. well, e-commerce brand, you know what right. I'm saying? It's like, that's cool. And I'm happy about that. But also let me give you like the in- this introspective look into how I see it now. Right. That, right. right. Um, so now I really, I really appreciate that. Man, I appreciate y'all. You're being too nice to me. It just shows that you know yourself. Right. right. Like you can be around somebody and tell when they're, you know, right. not comfortable right. with them. So right. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, cause we were like, man, we're trying to squeeze a couple podcasts in. Like, like we just we thought this was gonna go much longer, and it could. Obviously, there's so much that you know, but the game that you Bro, give it, I gotta watch this. Back. It just lets me know how refined. Right? I think that's the word refined. You are as as a, as a human being. Right? I appreciate that. So, man, we we appreciate. It. I mean, I don't know. Y'all have something else you want to know that you want to ask? Like he gave um, so much game away. How, how old are you, by the way? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. So if you had, yeah, I forgot. For yeah, I mean, so if you could look at your eighteen year old self and give him a couple pieces of advice, I love asking yeah. that question. But I guess what piece of advice would you get? That's pretty good. I would probably say, because my story is like I started with a job. So I'd probably say like, keep your job and spend all your money on skills. Because I feel like I just wasted so much time trying to find out everything myself, trying to save money. But at the end of the day, bro, even if it comes to a course or whatever, you're going to pay for it either way. Go try it. Like affiliate marketing, like e-commerce, drop shipping, whatever. And spend all of your useless money on acquiring skills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's probably what I would say. Yeah. While, while you don't care about the money, it's no secret that you got it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I say that to say, right? I say that to say. Save money, uh, security after this. Right. So, that's why it's so low key. Um, what, is, what does being a melanin millionaire mean to you? And the reason why I ask is because, you know, our platform is designed to super certain people of color, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? So we can understand what it's like to have that peace of mind. Like at the end of the day, you're able to do what you want to do because, right, you put your money in skills, but like you don't have that pressure and that stress. Mm-hmm. So like, what does being a melanin millionaire mean to you? So important, bro. And the reason I even think it's so important too is because as I look at what we do with the schools and whatnot, I started to ask myself, like, why didn't I know about these schools? And mm-hmm. why didn't anyone tell me about them? Or I didn't know what was going on. Like, why is that? And I realized that that happened because the Nikes and Adidas and all of these big brands, mm-hmm. they go and support these AAU teams at like five years old and six years old and then they grow up seeing that we've been sponsored by Nike our whole life so now I'm going to go to Duke because it makes sense and that's what I've been around so that is so important to me because now seeing people that look like us being able to have and do the things that we want we can go back and then contribute to like the cause like that and go back and sponsor these teams across the mm. nation and then now say well i wasn't wearing nike my whole life i was wearing support by college my whole life so and then now HBCU? i want to go to an hbcu and then keep yeah. that in that's so, love that's love that's think, love yeah i gotta i gotta all, so we're gonna still record it's gonna be off the podcast question now that, now that you said that we might drop it in the community but now hey man justin bro bro appreciate you man bro all i gotta say is bro Fire, man. bro thank you for the gems and uh Man, this was love, man. So y'all, hey, make sure y'all comment on YouTube. Blow this man up on social media. How can they, how can they find you? And yeah, my Instagram, Justin P. Probably the best page. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so tap in with him and uh, just let him know. Because listen, 
if I got game game from yeah. like this as a as a quote unquote peer, I already know what y'all over did. Like, listen, uh, whether it's your notepad or whatever, like just let him know that y'all appreciate him because as he said, he wants to give it all away for free. And being able to come on platforms like this and graciously share his time so y'all can enjoy it. Uh, the least we can do is show that we appreciate him. Give him a five star review. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, uh, like that, you know I said we gave this review because of this episode. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. But nah, thank y'all until next time. Peace. Peace.